we got going on today? I'm kind of playing musical machinery right now. This combine has to go into town and go to the dealership to have a little bit of work done to it. The other combine's out in the other shop. So I'm kind of shuffling things around to get this combine into the other shop so it's warm when the roads are clear and it's not so snowy out we can uh, switch the machines get this one into town it'll be easier to start it out in the heated shop another thing we got going on is uh, we're thinking about upgrading this tractor not sure what we're gonna go with uh, or even if we'll do it at all for that matter but we're calling around getting some prices on on trading for a, a newer tractor like that and we're considering uh, going with something that's on tracks uh, whether that be a, a T tractor from John Deere or uh, maybe even a K squad track um, we're going to check on prices and see what's out there, what's in the area that we could maybe trade for. Um, but that's kind of some of what we got going on today. So I got the dirty one out. Got equipment parked all over the place. Go in and get the clean one. Take this one out and bring it over to that other shed because this one doesn't need to be in here anymore. You know, it's funny, by the middle or end of October, I'm usually sick and tired of sitting in a combine, but it sure doesn't seem to take very long before I wish I was in a combine again. Moving these things around in the yard really makes me wish we were out harvesting today. I hope this isn't too boring for you guys and you're wondering what the heck I'm really making a video about, because to be honest, once we get done with harvest and we get things cleaned up, there's a lot of stuff going on that I just don't think is going to be real interesting for you guys. So. I don't know, I know um, I got a couple ideas for videos coming out. I do have the video editing software stuff now. I bought a new computer to do some editing. Uh, I just gotta get myself smart enough to do it. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, a couple of guys have been asking for videos, so I'm just gonna kinda let you guys know what I'm up to today. But this time of year, we end up doing an awful lot with um, things like uh, cash flows and balance sheets and figuring out where we're at after the, after the year went by. Um, we, we end up talking to the banker and making sure everything's good and we'll be good to farm again next year and and kind of just figure out where we're at and uh, also uh, kind of get ready for taxes because that's a big thing this time of the year um, getting ready for that so a lot of it is is bookkeeping and accounting and and dealing with the book side of things because when it's uh, 20 below zero out like it was a couple of days ago if we don't have any livestock which we don't um, we don't really want to be outside, so we end up making sure we come up with some book work to do. Usually after the first of the year, things change a little bit. We end up getting into uh, hauling corn. Usually kind of depends on what the local markets are doing, but a lot of the time we'll end up hauling corn. Um, last year, last January, we hauled an awful lot of corn. Uh, we had three trucks moving pretty much every day just to try and get it all out because the local markets were about as good as we thought they might get. And so we ended up selling a lot. Uh, we'll also do some work in the shop, um, kind of upkeeping and maintaining our equipment, just kind of fixing up on things that, that haven't gotten a lot of attention since we got busy last fall. Um, so working in the shop is also, that's another thing that we'll end up doing quite a bit more of here after we're done with Christmas and New Year's. Look at this mess I got going on here. We got all kinds of stuff sitting out. So we've got this uh, early 2000s, maybe even late 90s, I'm not sure, 9650. Someone online will correct me and tell me where I'm wrong there, but I think it's an early 2000s, 9650. And um, then we've got the newer 9870, that's a 2011. And for the farmers out there, you guys are gonna understand what I'm saying here, but what in the world is with changing the feeder house direction on the stick? So that when you drive one, you get used to the way the feeder house is controlled. 
then you hop in the other one and you're pushing the thing the wrong way all the time. What is the deal with that? And the lights on in this shed. There they went. We got all the lights, all the lights on one breaker, so we always have to turn it on and wait 10 seconds for it to trip the lights out. And then we flip the breaker and it works just fine. We should fix that someday. A bunch of you have been asking for a rundown about a rundown on what we've got for equipment. Well, this is the 8260 that I'm in right now. Um, as far as the smaller tractors, what we've got is this 8260. We got the 8360 there. Um, I told you about the two combines we've got. Um, we got a couple more I'll show you here in a minute. Like I was saying, the 8260R. Got that part now. We got the 8360RT. This guy's on tracks. Uh, for certain things, we really like those tracks. For most things, we really like them. There's a few instances where we don't like them. Uh, if you end up getting in the mud with them, if you get in like a ditch or a draw, for those of you who have driven them, you'll know what I'm talking about, but it's, it gets hard to turn out of it. As long as you're going straight through the draw, you'll never get that thing stuck. But as soon as you try and turn out of it, one of the tracks, whichever way you're turning, one of them stops turning and uh, you pretty well stop. It, it doesn't work very well. So it can be hard to get out of a draws with those things. This is the 1974 G750 Moline. Still use it just about every day. It runs like a champ. We got three trucks. This one's a W900 Kenworth. Three Timpty trailers that are pretty much identical. Like a kitten at a milk pail. Our other trucks, our twin trucks, see if I can squeeze by the combine I just put here. But these are T800 Kenworths, nothing fancy. 2004s. Uh, there are two, I believe, two numbers apart on the VIN number or the serial number. Nothing fancy with them, but they've been good, solid trucks, dependable. They're lightweight, so you can put a little bit more in them. And uh, they turn good. They've been good for us. That's the 9870. Uh, we don't have an S series yet. Um, we're kind of just holding off because they've been so expensive, and the 70 series have been really good for us. So we're pretty happy with the 70 series for now. We're kind of just waiting on the S-Series. This is the new sprayer we bought towards the end of last summer. If you watched the spraying videos, I didn't have this sprayer. Um, we bought this thing right towards the end when we were spraying aphids. Had them put 420s on it just so that uh, it'll cut in a little bit less. The 380s that were on it, a little bit narrower tire and, and uh, guys leave a lot of ruts with those around here. We got some heavier soils and, and we're on 30 inch rows. so. We put 420s on it because that's what we wanted. This is the 6410. Mostly what this gets used for in the winter is blowing snow. Uh, in the summer it gets used kind of for all kinds of odd job stuff. We put the rock forks on the three point so we can dig rocks out. We can do whatever we want with the bucket. It's kind of just an all around tractor. And we've had a little bit of snow here lately. And uh, I've had issues trying to blow out the yard because it's been so deep. I've been shearing, shearing bolts on the, on the PTO shaft on this. So I've been pushing, pushing a lot of it with the bucket because it's so heavy, but there's an awful lot of snow there. So the important thing that I'm doing right now is moving some of this snow over to that pile there because there's a hill going off the back edge of that and it's gonna make a really cool sledding hill for the kids. Almost forgot about the big horse. This is the 9630 here. This is the one that we're considering trading for something. We've had this one quite a few years. I'm gonna climb up in it and see how many hours we got on it so I can let the sales guys know what they'd be trading in. So I have to kind of apologize to you guys because I haven't had a video out for a long time and uh, you maybe thought I was gone, but I'm still here. I got a few ideas on what I wanna do for some videos. If you guys want, go ahead and comment. Let me know what you'd like to see for a video and I'll see if I can do it or not. I've started making about 10 or 15 different videos and I always get about halfway through and I think, ah, nobody's gonna find this interesting. Uh, so let me know. I hope you guys uh, got some enjoyment out of watching today and you'll give me some ideas. I do have a good one in mind. I am going to uh, let you guys know what my opinion is of GMOs and I'm hoping I'll have that video out for sure within the next week, maybe even this week yet. 
I'm just going to kind of sit down and run through what my thoughts are on genetically engineered crops and let you guys know different things like that. We're into winter now, so uh, the videos are going to be a little bit different until we get going again in the spring. I'll kind of let you guys in on things, things like that and um, let me know what you want me to talk about. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook as well.